Understanding Destiny's ever-changing meta can be somewhat daunting at times. You're always going to be switching loadouts, switching guns, and forever chasing what may be the new best gun or the new best exotic or the new best build to use. So in today's video, I'm going to go through the most used weapon in every single category so that you guys can know which one you guys want to be looking out for in Season 20 and heading into Season 21. With Lightfall dropping in Season 20, we've got a whole lot of new guns, and these guns have been scaling the ranks and heading straight to the top in certain categories categories. So some of these weapons that you might have been using for a few seasons, they may have fallen off. They still may be good, but there's definitely better versions out there. So stick around to the end so that you know exactly which guns are in which category. Now I want to thank Destiny Tracker for taking care of all of our Destiny go-to stats. This is an incredible website. They track usage, how many kills, everything. So shout out to Destiny Tracker for this one. I'm going to be putting timestamps throughout the video. So if you want to know which submachine gun, which auto rifle, which linear fusion, just head straight to that section. There'll be a little tracker in the bottom. But if you do enjoy this content, feel free to drop a like, let me know what you think, and maybe even consider subscribing. Well, let's get straight into it. Now, not only will I be telling you which is the most popular gun, but I'm also going to tell you guys how to obtain this gun and what my personal preference is for the god roll of this gun is. Now, for the pulse rifles, we have the BXR 55 Battler. This is from Season 15 when Dares of Eternity first came out. This weapon class also got a huge buff with the mid-season patch, getting a bonus 20% damage boost to all pulse rifles. This weapon can also roll with some really good perks such as Incandescent, making it overall a very hard hitter. With its high stability and high damage output, this makes for a very sought-after PvP and PvE role. Also going into the craftable category, you can change your roll-up on the fly to whatever you need. The most popular trait combo for this one for PvE is Demolitionist and Incandescent and the most popular PvP build is Perpetual Motion and Kill Clip. Now, the best way to obtain this weapon is by playing some Dares of Eternity and crossing your fingers and hoping for some good luck. Coming up next in the hand cannon section, we have the Sunshot. This is the exotic energy hand cannon from Season 1 of Destiny 2, one of the oldest exotics in Destiny 2. This is an all-around great, very sought-after weapon that works very well with Solar 3.0 and some of the amazing solar builds that you can use. Now, because this one is an exotic, the easiest way to get this one is either through Xur, getting exotic ingrams, or buying it through the focusing decoder next to the vault in the tower. Next on the list is the scout rifles. Now, top in the list is the Hung Jury SR4, and in particular, the Adept version, and that's pretty clear as to why. Now, the Hung Jury has been around for three separate seasons, starting off in Season 14, coming back in Season 19, and now another version in Season 20. Each version is fairly similar. However, the newest one can have some of the best perks to maximize your capability with this Scout Rifle. Scout Rifles are definitely an end-game weapon. Most people be using these in GMs and raids, where they want to stay a little bit further away from the enemies than they would in a normal Nightfall punch out some good damage at long range, and the Hung Jury is the perfect weapon for this. Now to keep it simple, we're just going to go off the Season 20 Hung Jury, and this one is obtained through this season's Nightfalls. If you want to get the Adept version, you're going to have to do a Grandmaster Nightfall. However, if you're not that good of a player, you can also just get the normal version through doing a normal Nightfall when this weapon is on rotation. Now, the most popular trait combo for this weapon this season is Rapid Hit and Kinetic Tremors. Kinetic Tremors is a new perk that has just came to Destiny 2 in Season 20. Now, the second most popular trade combo is Shoot to Loot and Kinetic Tremors. People think this could be a very good combo coming into next season with the Shoot to Loot buff. We're going to have to see what happens. This may be a good roll, but your best bet is to try and get that Rapid Hit and Kinetic Tremors. The most popular is the Rufus's Fury. This is from the new Root of Nightmares raid. The mid-season patch that Bungie just put out, they made a huge buff to auto rifles, giving them a 25% damage bonus. And this has seriously stepped up the auto rifle game, and I see a lot of players starting to use more auto rifles, and this is one of the best because it can roll with with reconstruction and target lock. That seems to be the most sought after roll on this gun. This gun is also craftable, so if you get enough red borders from the new raid, you can craft this one, making it a very good auto rifle. Moving on to everyone's most favorite champion killer is the fusion rifles. Now, the most popular this season is the Riptide. Everyone is chasing after a Riptide purely because it can roll with some great perks like auto loading holster and chill clip. Now, as we all know, with the changes to champions, stasis, stuns, and shatters can basically break every champion in Destiny 2. So having a chill clip fusion rifle basically covers you on all ends if there's 
lose any champions in any activity, saving the other two slots for whatever weapons you want to use. The Riptide came out back in Season 17, and the easiest way to obtain this is to play a little bit of Crucible, get some Engrams, and then focus them at Lord Shax, and hopefully you get the gold roll you want. Trust me, I still haven't got one, and I've spent about 50 Engrams at Lord Shax. So, good luck to you guys. Hope you guys can get the roll you want. Now, Sniper Rifles haven't been the hottest topic in Destiny for a few seasons now, and a few players really wish that snipers would come back, because they are a very fun weapon to use, and they can be very powerful in the right situations. With the new buff to Sniper Rifles, it's reducing the recoil by 50%, and increasing the total ammunition of the magazine and the reserves by 30% on all bases. The most popular Sniper Rifle this season so far is the Succession, a kinetic Sniper Rifle. Now, this one drops from the Deep Stone Crypt of a few encounters, so you want to make sure you're doing some Deep Stone Crypt to get this weapon. This weapon is also craftable, and the most sought after roll or craftable weapon version is Reconstruction and Vorpal Weapon. This can get a huge amount of bullets in the magazine and do some really good damage to bosses. Moving on to shotguns, we have the new exotic Conditional Finality. This is the new raid exotic from Root of Nightmares. This will drop from the end boss. You gotta be super lucky to get this one. The chances of this dropping are super, super low. If you wanna increase your chances, you're gonna have to do some triumphs for the Root of Nightmares raid to increase those chances of it dropping. I still haven't got one. Hopefully you guys can get one. Good luck with that one. Moving on to everyone's favorite weapon this season, we have the machine guns. It seems to be that everyone's favorite is the Thunderlord, and that's for good reason. This weapon is a monster and it can do some serious output damage to a lot of bosses out there and it's great overall ad clear. This weapon can one phase run with the right fire team and it can also one phase a lot of other bosses in multiple dungeons and whatnot. On top of this, it has intrinsic overload for overload champions, and if you get the catalyst for it, it just does even more damage. Now, I feel as though most guardians will have this exotic. However, if you do not have one, you can get lucky through some exotic engrams, or better yet, focusing it through the decoder in the tower. Moving on to the rocket launchers, we have the Galahorn coming in as the king number one exotic rocket launcher. Now, the Galahorn has been around since the Destiny 1 days, and it is the most famous weapon when anyone mentions Destiny. Everyone just thinks about the Galahorn. This is a pretty no-brainer. Now, because this is a pretty no-brainer, I'm going to let you know what the second most popular weapon is for the rocket launchers this season, and that is the Hothead, which can also be obtained through Nightfalls and focusing them through Zavala. This is a very popular weapon amongst Warlocks, purely because of the Starfire build. The go-to role for this one is definitely Demolitionist and Explosive Light. However, if you're not a Warlock, Auto-Loading Holster and Explosive Light is just as good. Sidearms have always been the backburner of Destiny, with not many players ever really using them. The most popular one this season is the Michael's Reverence, which is also the newest sidearm from the Raid Root of Nightmares. As we know, all of the Root of Nightmare weapons are now craftable, and you can even enhance them. The most popular trait combo for this one is Rewind Rounds and Hatchling. So if you haven't got one of these, jump into Root of Nightmares and cross your fingers. Now, onto my personal favorite, that is the Swords. And obviously, we have the other half, which is at the top. This is also from the Dares of Eternity, back in Season 15. Everyone loves this sword because it can roll with the perk Eager Edge, which makes Destiny a lot more exciting than what it should be. This is basically for speedrunners and those just looking to get around a lot faster. If you play a Warlock or a Hunter, you can do what you call a Well Skate or a Stasis Shatter Skate. It's a lot of fun, so make sure you get one of these and learn some of the movement tech. Honestly, it's my most used weapon and my most leveled up weapon. It's a bit of a meme as well because you can launch Guardians into walls and kill them. However, with Season 20, Bungie actually fixed this so you don't die from impact damage. So you can't really do that anymore, but it was a lot of fun. So this weapon, like I said, is obtained through Dares of Eternity. So when you're farming for the BXR Battler, also farm for one of these and look out for the perk Eager Edge. Moving on to the grenade launchers. Everyone knows this one. Everyone's favorite is the exotic Wither Horde. This one came out back in season 11 and it has been topping the charts ever since. This gun is a lot of fun. It does some serious damage and it's been working super well with the Starfire Warlock build, which is just some of the best damage in the game with the Starfire Protocol, Fusion Nades and Wither Horde spam. But better yet, just being able to attach an enemy or a boss with the Wither Horde while it does tick damage, you can then pull out another gun and do extra damage with that gun while your Wither Horde is ticking away damaging the boss. You get the catalyst on it, it also has auto-loading holster, so you can shoot the Wither Horde, switch to your heavy, and then by the time you've emptied your heavy, your Wither Horde's gonna be reloaded, and it's just a very good rinse and repeat damage cycle. Now this one was released back in Shadowkeep, so I believe you can buy this one through the vendor engrams in the tower, or if you get an exotic engram, you're gonna try and get lucky enough. Now moving on to our Fallen Soldiers, the Linear Fusion Rifles. Now if I made this video a season ago, I would have bet my last dollar that the Cataclysmic was at the top of the charts, 
purely because of the great rolls and high damage output that that weapon did. However, with the slight nerf that they got and the other weapons getting bonuses, the LFRs have sort of fallen off. However, the Arbalist is the most popular and it is still topping the charts purely because it is a great weapon to take into Grandmasters and deal with those anti-barrier champions. And because this one is an exotic, this one will be obtained the exact same way as how you get all the other exotics. I believe they put the Arbalist in the rewards for the new light quest. So if you play Destiny and you haven't done the new light quest for some reason, go and do that. You're going to get the Arbalist for free, but I assume every Guardian has this weapon by now. Moving into the Trace Rifle section, we have the Acacia's Dejection, which is also from the Raid Root of Nightmares. There's a few weapons that are topping this list from the new Root of Nightmares raid. There are great weapons, and the Trace Rifle is one of them. And the best thing about this weapon is that it can roll with Reconstruction and Incandescent, and you can also craft it, making it a insane weapon with so many bullets in the mag, and then using the Incandescent to blow up everything on top of this. It is one very sought after weapon. If you haven't caught on yet, I'm basically telling you guys to do Root of Nightmares and try and get as many of these weapons as you can. They're very good. Moving into the bow category, we have the Wish Ender as the top dog for the bows. A lot of people have been using it this season in the Grand Master Nightfalls. It is a very, very hard hitting bow. And on top of that, it also has intrinsic anti-barrier. So it's an overall great weapon for Grand Master Nightfalls. Now, this is definitely one of the harder exotics to obtain. There is a whole quest line behind this, which came out in season eight with the Dreaming City. I definitely recommend just heading over to YouTube and looking up some guides as to how to obtain the Wish Ender. I personally obtained it through Dado's guide. So head over to YouTube and good luck. Now, wrapping up the list here with the submachine guns, the most popular submachine gun this season is the Funnel Web, and that is for some good reasons. The Funnel Web is a Void legendary submachine gun coming in at 900 RPM, the fastest firing rate submachine gun in Destiny 2. Now, this season, with all of the Void builds and Bungie basically telling us to use volatile round builds, Funnel Web is a very, very good weapon for this. With overall great perk rolls that you can get on this, there's plenty of different versions that you want to obtain. However, the most popular is Subsistence and Frenzy. Now, unfortunately, this weapon being a well drop, I do not believe there is a specific way to actually farm this weapon by doing one specific encounter. However, the easiest way for you guys to get this one is hold off until Banshee44 is selling it. Sells it a few times each season. So hopefully he sells it a couple more times before the end of the season. And just keep an eye out at Banshee44's inventory and hopefully he sells it. But anyway, Guardians, that is all I have for you today. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you stuck around right to the end, thank you for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you guys later.